Welcome back, everybody. It's playoffs, and it's looking pretty dire here for Cloud9, down 0 and 2 against FlyQuest. Game number one, game number one was close. Game uh -huh. number two uh -huh. was not. So, at the beginning of this series, I was getting flamed for uh, our dive bet, the lemon, uh, the lemon bet. The lemon <laughs> is in the other mouth. Isaiah immediately. <laughs> it's about you to be. On the other foot, you know. I thought it worked. It's about Come to be on. in your mouth. <laughs> no, you're not I'm with just, me. I'm just. I'm just. You gonna... have some cooked references. Hey, he I'm got it. Pretend. He was give the man a break. He goes. I go along with you. <laughs> Listen, what happened to being bros? You're just to, well, I thought we were ride or die, Flower. I abandoned you in your time of living. You lemon looked at me like I was the biggest idiot you've ever met. Whippo, Whippo is shocked right now at this breakup. Yeah, uh, crazy. <laughs> I stepped in for him at his time of need. Yeah. Where was he when I made a bad joke? How quickly I was we right forget. Here. I was just <laughs> shaking my head. Were you? You're going to make him sick again, sir. Uh, oh, no. Please, no. Don't boom me. All right. We've got, let's, let's see how the draft changes around here in this one. Cloud9 has elected to go back on the red side here for this game. It's oh. Ari, Nico, and Lucian banned out by FlyQuest. It's Senna, Varus, and Callista banned out by C9. It's Oriana locked in for yeah. Jensen. Get to the good one. There we go. <laughs> the Jensen Oriana. I had the to get junk first. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the legend here. Most played champion. Incredible win rate on this. It's almost always been permaban versus him and yet they let it through um let's uh let's see how they fare here it feels like in game in this game cloud9 are like you know what we are so against the ropes right now we got to unleash hell berserker zary the go-to this is his favorite champion he was like our original pentakill king on it and they need to bring that back pentakill pikachu has been dethroned by the dragon <laughs> but berserker is an og pentakill uh, is, pikachu player Back in a brighter time when Pentakills meant something. Uh -huh. but, um, Are we really saying that Zeri era was when Pentakills meant by something? By comparison. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we are. The dark times of Smolder have really... <laughs> the eternal dark times of Smolder. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Things are But I, I will say, for Cloud9, this feels like they're just going towards absolute comfort. They're going to go towards a 5v5 comp. Uh, and I, I worry a little bit for, you know, where they're at prep-wise, because I did feel like they got kind of draft gap two games in a row. Mm. And now it feels like, like, all right, well, I guess we just pick what we normally play and go for 5v5. But Zeri's not really considered uh, S tier right now. Smolder was actually available. They elected not to go for it. So they're going, I assume, Maokai jungle potentially, or do you think it's going to be Maokai support? I feel like if you go Maokai support, the lane is going to be potentially too weak. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of assuming it is going to be Maokai jungle, and now we know that. So it's going to be Zeri and Alistar. So drafting go buttons, mm. playing around Berserker. I think, I think Cloud9 have to ban out some, like, Vi, some junglers that are going to lock down the Zeri because uh, Berserker is obviously, they're like, all right, Berserker, please save us. Mm -hmm. They're yep. praying to him right now. You know, they, they've tried in the previous two games. They're like, JoJo hasn't been able to do it. So they really got to ban some junglers to protect that. Yeah, there, there's the Vi. Expect another jungle ban here because some... Uh, some guaranteed engages onto that Zeri are the scary thing. I would also ban Nocturne with the Vi, even though Zeri does have a lot better escape options. When you have Nocturne with Nautilus and Orianna, it's like, holy, I can't see anything, and I'm just getting jumped on. Chat voted 83% of them thought that the lemon in the other mouth worked. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm just uh -huh. vindicated. You're one of the 17%. Now yeah, you're the I, weirdo, Flower. I guess I'm the, I'm the weirdo, man. Yeah. I don't understand the lemon. <laughs> you're getting a lemon too, buddy. I don't want no lemon. I didn't well, agree to this. Should have should have thought of that. Well, you should have invited me on your show. <laughs> well, you can come on, We're gonna invite flowers on the dive. Just this, eat the lemon. This week, just eat the lemon. Uh -huh. This guy's sitting in the background, not participating in any way. I'm just gonna be chilling. I'll <laughs> yeah, nod my head when you say something. Okay. That's how I'll make it up to you. I appreciate I'm that. not even gonna pay attention to what you say, but Thank I'm gonna you. agree Thank no you. matter what it That's is. That's important. Blind faith. <laughs> lemon stonks are <laughs> down. <laughs> Whoa! That was a quick sign! <laughs> That's that's impressive. Ran out, immediately made it. Uh, up to date. I love the topical signs. Between game signage. All right. So the LCS sign game is out of control. This one, by the way. Yeah, we are we are Shout popping off with the posters. signs. Good job, fans. We've got uh, Tristana, Jason, Renekton, three AD oh. solo laners. They're calling for Remote the Kiana. Here. Okay. I feel about that one. <laughs> well, Kiana's popular now because the voice actress for Kiana has been doing a lot of yeah. stuff reacting to the community. 
Those it's, are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, those are really entertaining. So. All right. Well, they're going back to the Yone, Kiana, though. I think we're going to But it would be cool. I also don't think so. Uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the Yone lock in here, can they get it done? Maokai, Twisted Advance, plus a Yone. Like, they've got the point and click. Yo, they've got to get this sick. Kill. That is what? actually crazy. That's better I than anything I could ever Yone even imagine drawing. How long did that take you? That that was that was insane. The detail on that Oriana. By the way, Oriana. The like, I got here last yeah. Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I've been, been driving just for a while. <laughs> the exact stats for a Jensen Oriana. By the way, most played champion for him over the course of his very long professional uh, career at 98 games, 75% win rate wow. with the rounding up uh, there for him. That is absolutely crazy. Oh, Gwen, I would actually really like here. It is into uh, the Gragas. Of course, you can still go phase rush, and sometimes people go phase rush and AP Gragas and do these little different things to answer it. Whoa. Instead, it's going to be the mind. Olaf. So taking a page out of Whippo's book here a little bit and throwing one of his counter picks right back at him. This becomes very difficult. It is definitely going to be phase rush Gragas. So I'll be shocked if it is not. That is one of the only ways you can actually disengage these potential all ins. Yeah. But of course, you can immune the cast, you can immune the body slam. You are looking to really go right at him. They're drafting some dive buddies here alongside the One, some additional targets, some people to be able to actually start up the fight so he can be the follow up. It's so much easier as a Yone when you are the secondary engage instead of the primary. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be Phase Rush Gargus, and Phase Rush Gargus is pretty hard to, to catch too. Oftentimes you can bait out the Olaf perfect, Ultimate. Guy. If you, yeah, exactly. You bait out the Olaf Ultimate as long as he doesn't get another attack off. You can time it out, look for re-engages, look for jungle plays. Uh, but honestly, I think this one is going to be very difficult for Cloud9. Backs against the walls. This is upper bracket, though. Uh, let me remind all the fans. So if they upper fall bracket. this wall, there's another one. Yeah, you've got two lives still. Yep. <laughs> Both these teams still have two lives, and they don't want to use them, but they do have two. So... Speaking of having different options that you may or may not have to use, what do we expect to see from everybody's favorite like thrift store item shopper in Kaisa this game? Because we hear about how like the you know the AP build is really strong lane, but you've already got double AP solo lanes, and it's a pretty magic damage heavy comp to go AP Kaisa as well. Are we just expecting AD Kaisa here? What's the what do you guys with Lethal Tempo? I think it's just gonna be Shiv Kraken, would be my expectation. Okay. So I think it is gonna be on hit. Um, especially because there are multiple tanks, some frontliners that are gonna be difficult that you have to, to get through. You get reported if you go triple A uh, AP here. You get, okay. you get super reported. I'm just yeah. making sure I'm <laughs> Your not... solo laners are pissed. Your jungler is pissed. <laughs> your support is pissed. I have not played an 80 carry champion in years. The closest I get is when I roll one in ARAM and give yeah. it to a Zale. But while we're waiting on the minions to spawn in this game, we got Raz standing by with FlyQuest coach Nuke Duck. That's right. I got Nuke Duck with me. First question, you guys are 2-0 up. Comps have been looking nice. What's your assessment so far of the series and your guys' performance? Uh, the guys playing surprisingly well. Uh, like, of course, without some laning problems, but yeah, they're playing very well. And uh, yeah, the assessment is we just need to not get too excited and cocky. This is a definite problem we have because, or we never win clean wins, you know? We always have to do a little too much, throw a bit, and then come back. So I hope the guys will take it like fully serious. That's the main uh, problem I guess we're facing. And I guess that's literally my second question is just like how to be how you guys can clinch this series out. You kind of already answered it, but just based off the comp alone, uh, anything that you're afraid of with the Cloud Nine's comp here? Yeah, I mean, it's Fudge on Olaf. That's like the, this their trump card this game, you know. Uh, so if we keep him in check, we should be winning. So, you know, I think we're gonna win. <laughs> All right, sounds confident to me. I'll send it straight back to you guys, the casters. The first, the first question and answer is the best part. That was actually hilarious. <laughs> Surprisingly well, the team is playing. <laughs> uh, honestly here though, yeah, it feels like they do have full confidence there. He, he mentioned keeping Blippo in check and being confident that they can do that. I'm also curious how much focus will stay on JoJo this game. Game number one, it was all JoJo focus all the time. Game number two, it kind of just felt like FlyQuest was running away with it. JoJo just unable to play, really, without having to be specifically focused down because of the comp difference. I mean, I, I think for better or for worse, you know, win or lose, there's going to be a lot of focus on JoJo from the results of these first two games, right? Mm. Uh, game one, he was getting picked off nonstop. Game two, the comp was kind of built around him, but he couldn't really make it happen. I do think it was a very difficult composition to play, but yeah. still, this is the superstar player. You know, you heard Vulcan in the interview at the top of the day. 
You know we have Jojo in the mid, so he's going to be slamming mid. We just have to not end. We're going to win the game. That has not been the case whatsoever. Jensen nope. has been heavily outperforming. I actually wanted to look to chat, but we're going to get a gank here real quick. If Jojo takes a Q in. Uh, Jensen's trying to trying to be like, oh, I'm looking pretty juicy. Why yeah. Yeah. It's oh, look at me. <laughs> it, it was a little bit too far on the act stupid scale, I think. You got to act just stupid enough for it to be believable, yeah. but he was just walking straight right. at him. But I will say Jensen has been actually immaculate in this series. He has not died yet. So I wanted to pose a question to chat. Do you think Jensen will even die one time in this series? If we put up a poll for Jensen, because he has been so good and now he's on his Orianna, he too has the phase rush. Uh, to be able to get out of a lot of these melee ganks that they're going to throw his way as Whippo also face checks. Yeah, Whippo does not really want to be here any longer. Undertow hits him for enough to get him down below 100, but Whippo should be able to get away now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and this is this is Ghost for Fudge, not Flash. So it's not like you flash in right. and finish him off there. Uh, it was never going to be the kill, but does lay in wait. Finds a nice little play. Whippo, though, of course, you know, you're starting with just the mana crystal. It's not a lot of combat power. It's just going to be about <laughs> I'm going to put that at zero for yeah, combat yeah, power. So. Hey, zero is not a lot. There you go. That is uh, true. So you're just trying to survive, right? And he is going to be able to successfully do that fudge. <laughs> Uh, I have seen some people commit fully to just like Ma Rush and stuff. It looks like he is going uh, at least towards that Hex Drinker. Uh, definitely does want to be bullying in this matchup and wants to play heavily towards that. Yeah. Uh, even Lee Sin has a little bit of magic damage too in the kit. So always feels super nice for going for the all ins. It's definitely going to be uh, a little risky here for Cloud9. H how do you feel? Because Blabber, remember he had such an amazing, never mind, bottom side gets a nice little chunk, but Blabber had such an amazing. Maokai record for so long that they made so much. Oh, never mind. We've got, we've, we've got possible possible pressure. It is alleviated quite quickly, though. But, um, you know, a lot of people also talk about how when Blabber's not on one of these carries, then, you know, Cloud9 do have trouble. And this series, now him being on Maokai, they've got carries everywhere else, basically. And he has yeah. to do the setup work. Yeah, and I mean, he, he was really successful with that. Like, as you were alluding to, mm -hmm. um, he had this incredible record. I can't remember how many games in a row he won, but it was a lot. Fudge getting pretty aggressive here. Might look for the all-in because Bubba was very far up. Not going to commit to it. I mean, that mini wave is very big, so he's being a little bit respectful to it and obviously doesn't have six just yet. Yeah. Right. Pretty. He's like a little bit more than halfway away from it. JoJo does get his level six, though. Jensen, no problem here. Has his teleport to get right back. I think if he hits that Q3, he could maybe kill him because Jensen wasn't six and he just hit it, so... Uh, it could have been Q3 into ulti, but maybe a fight here over by the Grubs. Yep. Inspired and Whippo were there first. They snipe out the first <laughs> Grub, but C9 now has more manpower. Oh! Inspired! Oh, inspired! What, what in the hell was that? Okay, hold on. We got the cask thrown out to disengage it. That was, that was a little wild. Well, he wanted to be able to smite it. It was so close to 600 there, so he wanted to take the Q and be able to, to smite it in a couple of seconds. And then the Grub just leashes back. The uh, the Cloud Nine Grub, C9 Grub, <laughs> C9 Grub, <laughs> trying to pull in that jungler, get some uh, get some revenge there. Well, this is the first time so far in the series that FlyQuest has acquired a Grub. Both of the previous games, it was all six Grubs for C9. This is the first Grub for FlyQuest. Is that good or bad for them though? Because they won the last two without getting a Grub. Well, they deviated from the plan of. You can up tell the Grubs purpose. were pissed because then they tried to kill Inspire. <laughs> Well, I'd say, I think what was the number, Kobe? 72% of people uh -huh. think that it's a good thing because the grubs cute. are cute. Oh. You gotta have cute grubs. The Void Might's not the grubs. Oh. That's a whole different story. Yeah, I, I, I guess think I even more percentage probably yeah. think those are good. Yeah. <laughs> I must have not been paying attention in class. That's my bad. We got the Drake started up, though. We got the attempt on that one from FlyQuest, which again, we'll see if they can control these early Drakes. Game number one, it was absolutely huge for them being able to have the mid game control they needed. Vulcan just kind of going to look on. Look at Whippo. Whippo's actually roamed mid here. He's going to be a surprise for Cloud9. Yeah, Blabber's going to get jumped on here first, and as soon as Whippo shows up, Jojo knows that he then has to retreat. He can't try to stand and fight these guys. Blabber loses his flash, but he keeps his life, and that's what's important. Now Fudge, with his lane opponent gone, can shove up the top lane too. Yeah, as soon as he sees him, tries to hard push, Q through the minions, but Whippo on his way back has an easy route. He'll lose just one melee. It's a cannon wave, and those are the types of plays that you're talking about when you're highlighting how smart Whipple has been. Uh, top laner taking some of his time. 
Oh, inspired oh. again. He goes all the way back. He follows Jojo to the origin point of the Soul Unbound, but still no kills coming in just yet. Bottom lane, Zeri pops the ulti, and Fusio's got to be scared now. He tries to walk away. Dredge line back onto the Alistar. Vulcan gets out, and it's first blood over to Berserker. The Zeri is ready to go. Masu's still at about half HP, trying to wait out the ulti here, see if maybe there's some kind of an angle. Zap hits him, but not after it goes into the train. Berserker down to 200, Masu down to 200. Monster's not going to do this anymore. He's heading home. That is so big for Cloud9. 2v2. They get the kill in the bot lane. First blood for Berserker on the Zeri. That is a big confidence booster when Cloud9 really needed in this series. Yeah, they put so much faith in him really early on. The Berserker Zeri carry. See if uh, Vulcan shenanigans here. Right out of the brush. They thought it was the uh, recall. He gets the setup onto Busio, immediate ult from Berserker, and they know they're going to chase it all the way through. Vulcan does a good job staying in front of Busio too, uh, so that he can't get the hook escape onto the wall. And then after the hook, he flashes away, make sure there's no counter kill. I gotta say, it always feels really bad when your bot lane dies, and then you look, it was to a cull AD carry, right? You know, Zeri yeah. actually had bought a cull before that. They get the outplay anyway, they get the 2v2 kill. So he's off the races here a little bit. <laughs> We, we got the numbers back. Over 70% of chat does think uh, Jensen will die this game. Uh, he will not go deathless in this series. And now the, Berserkers, now the Berserkers got some money. Honestly, with Berserker getting money on Zeri, I've seen this before. Uh, I'm definitely feeling a little bit more worried for FlyQuest this game. Well, Blabber here on this Maokai. Still waiting to see either one of the junglers get involved in any kills. Inspired has definitely made some attempts. Dredge line onto Vulcan. Lots of damage there on the Alistar, chunking him down, but the Zeri ult, he's already ready to go. Berserker wants some more PvP. Masu and Busio trying to get themselves back a little bit. Vulcan hits level six, and that means the chance for a counter punch is greatly diminished. Masu and Busio have to retreat all the way back underneath their turret. Yeah, this is quite well played there, but they're gonna look for Jojo. Inspired knows there's no soul unbound. Fate sealed though. Nicely done from Jojo to keep himself safe. Yeah, really good job from Inspired to blow his uh, his ultimate cooldown there too. He, by landing that Q and taking it in, all he wants there, get the extra cooldown out of Jojo. Now you've got no ultimate, the Yone here, feeling the pressure. Good. Jensen doing a good job there too, just interrupting the back, messing with his tempo a little bit. And, and that's gonna uh, make sure that these grubs are gonna be pretty much guaranteed. Jojo now does get a Knight's Vow, but this mid lane cannot get over to grubs. Should be inspired picking up the rest. Yeah, he's got control over that. Blabber shows up mid, but Jensen is just ready to stare these guys down 1v2, keep the jungler away, keep the mid laner too low a health to be able to really participate in the situation. Jensen committing the shockwave there just to make sure that he's keeping these guys out. Inspired still working the last one of those grubs. Remember that C9 did get two from that first set of them, so neither side going to be spawning the void grubbies this game as the invade from C9 Oh no, Busio wanted to channel his Hex Flash to get back over that wall, but it's gonna be a lot harder than he wanted it to be. He stays alive for now. Blabber throws out the Berserker. ulti. Busio's still burning. Berserker makes his way into the fight from the side as Jensen now tries to escape, but he's gonna be careful. He flashes back over the wall to the Blast Cone. Inspired tries to flash to the safety of the Tier 1 turret, but Berserker is popping off in Game 3. Big moves there from the Cloud9 bot lane, being able to roam up. Berserker gets there, grabs another kill as Cloud9 win another fight in the yeah. FlyQuest jungle. And it's all because they knew the grubs are being given over to FlyQuest, to Inspired. And when enemy jungler is up on grubs, you got to take something from him on the bottom side of the map. So Blabber went with Vulcan. And even though Busio is like, all right, they got to be in here, right? They're, they're counter jungling. We just saw them. They still get the jump. So this is a, a little bit of a pop quiz here. So you're trying to guess in chat. This is Masu's playoff debut, and we have another player here. You're trying to guess what playoff debut is that this bald head? Is that you? You got yourself in there? <laughs> huh, Isaac? My playoff debut was pretty good. That, that's looking pretty round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kobe's just staring at my head. You're just going <laughs> I'm look at the I'm looking at you back at the screen. I was like, that's definitely. So the shadows can be misleading, because one time we did a guessing game, and I was yeah. like, that was Dokla. I know it's the shadow of Dokla, so I guessed Dokla. And they're like, yeah, that was Dokla's shadow, but the answer wasn't Dokla. Yeah. I just like I how you robbed. tried to direct Kobe's attention attention to the statistical comparison of the players and he's like, I don't know, he's got no round head. head. <laughs> I've seen that head a lot. <laughs> okay. Let's see. It. I was trained by by Pokemon though to trust the shadows. <laughs> I feel like I've been betrayed. I know. Alright, well Shadow dragons have leveled up. 
with FlyQuest. Coming to challenge C9 here for the Drake. Inspired's in the pit. Zeri Zap comes through over the top. Blabber's trying to keep these guys away using the ulti as Vulcan's here from the front line with the Alistar all leading the charge. C9 just looking to run over him. Whippo's already down as Jojo goes in for the paint seal. Resets his spot so he doesn't get burst himself. Now Busio drops next. FlyQuest are dropping like flies. C9 have finally found their way to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a total of five kills for Berserker now? We have seen this story before. Wrap it up. It is a rich, rich Cloud9 AD carry. Inspired played it well in the 50-50. Kicks out Blabber. Blabber tries to Q flash back in for the smite, but he secures it. But Cloud9 were playing heavily for the fight. FlyQuest are positioning for this potential Dragon Steal and end up just getting roasted by the Cloud9 AD carry. Watch how Inspired plays this as it gets low, steps forward, doesn't get rooted up, kicks him out, secures it with that Q smite, but Jojo on the other side, they're on Whippo. Look where Masu is, look where Jensen is. They're completely zoned out by the Maokai all. Meanwhile, the Cloud9 carries are always hitting. Yeah, and Berserker's like melee range in here, pops the ultimate, easy, easy chase downs with Zeri always too. Now he's so fed, he didn't have a completed item in that fight. Now he finished his static shiv, he's got the extra zeal on top of it. Um, I mean, this this is exactly how Cloud9 need the early stages to go to win this game. When you're focused on getting these extra kills, yes, you have given up two dragons, but you put yourself into such a good position to fight dragon number three and completely stop any of these advantages that FlyQuest did accrue. Uh, so I definitely do have confidence in extending this series, and I'm pretty happy with that so that we at least get some more games. FlyQuest, of course, still very much have some chances here with the dragon stacking and with the way that you can play some of these team fights. Jensen, by the way, still has not died, so the Orianna Shockwave might come up huge. And I don't know about you guys, but when we saw JoJo's reaction to that fight, to me, it looked like a bit of relief on his face after yeah. they won that fight, after they finally found a composition that's working for them, after this game number three is going the way that it is, because I feel like you had to be feeling the pressure wow. and the stress, especially after how bad game number two was. 53% so of chat actually guessed this. And then Wait, 53 of them got actually, it right? 53%, not even just 53 people. That's actually crazy. Wow. I feel like that's a really hard one to get, but... Obviously, you know, throwback to Danny had this incredible, incredible debut. Also played alongside Inspired on that EG roster. Mm -hmm. It is again Inspired, you know, paired up with this really experienced top side, like he was with Impact and whatnot on that team. Uh, but that time he was with Jojo and Danny, and they were able to make that title run. So FlyQuest trying to replicate some of that success. It has been a bit of a recipe here in the LCS since EG had that big success, is pairing strong, young NA talent with veterans, trying to help them really learn and level up their gameplay at a faster pace. Exactly. You have the veterans for their skill objectively, but they're also a catalyst for the development of the younger players. Level them up faster. Make sure you've got the whole roster ready to go. Inspired is just hanging on the brushes here, but he's not going to find anybody. He's seeing if maybe there's some opportunity to get a punish. The teleport onto the tier one turret from JoJo. But again, this champion is so hard uh, no, to no. catch and burst uh, down. No. Shockwave immediately. JoJo trying to get away from it. The Nautilus ulti, oh. he still gets away from it. This is Yone. This is, this is Yone. He's still alive. Okay, okay, he finally drops, he finally drops. I was, I was really wondering if he was gonna fully get out there. <laughs> I gotta say credit to him though. He times the, the snapback on the soul bounce to completely immune the Nautilus ult on the knockup. That was the reason he doesn't just immediately die. Uh, that was well played against them that one kill back. Uh, he's able to use all the tools at his disposable to get it. Yeah, exactly. It's all because of that that they do the overchase there, and then they end up sending Inspired all the way into the grave. And because you overcommitted on bottom side, that leaves the rest of the map open. And who benefits the most out of it? Solo Tower Gold into Berserker. Man. His most famous quote is, I like money. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just going to say that. That was a great quote. <laughs> and... He does indeed like money, so he's <laughs> definitely happy this game. That's two items already. Some of the stories are so funny that I've heard about, you know, like they'll be playing in a scrim and Fudge will TP down, get him a double kill, take one minion, uh -huh. he's helping him push out the wave, and he's like, Fudgy, stop it. You know, like my minions. <laughs> <laughs> he just really likes that money, yeah, dude. He so wants funny, to man. farm up. He needs all the gold. That's what makes a great AD carry. <laughs> Greed. <laughs> Greed. <laughs> Give me all the money, and yeah. I will kill all of the enemies. Well, 
Whippo making this matchup not look so fun for Fudge as he's been getting chunked out. Did just sit on the Nail Magic Mantle, elected to go for the Ravenous Hydra first, so it has a lot of sustain. Wasn't going to be the Hex Shrinker Rush that we have seen before. Mm -hmm. I love, too, how we were talking so much in the beginning about, uh, oh, yeah, Cloud9 have three, uh, you know, possible carries here. Guess what? That Knight's Vow is going one place and one place only. Oh, yeah. There's only one Vow in this game worth taking, and that is the one to Berserker. As he uh, pulls Dragon, Cloud9 should have a very easy time. Take bottom tower, take out the Dragon, and a uh, little bit of extra push. One Constellation Tower on the top side of the map does go over to FlyQuest as Whippo finishes it up and pushes the wave out. Soul Stack is stopped. Oh, they want JoJo's head again. Eight kills to two. It's the tilt JoJo play. That's what they're going for. Trying to just blow this guy up. He's not getting away that time. Fudge teleports in. He's ready to Ragnarok and roll. He finds a kill on Inspired and now has to get back out of the fight. Masu's looking to kite around the edges here, but Vulcan's zoning him away. A beautiful ult. He comes out from Whippo. And holy cow, and a hook from Bucio for the shutdown on Berserker. He curved the bullet like Angelina Jolie! That is your first team all pro support, Busio on the rift. They get the shutdown off of Berserker's head. FlyQuest just clawed their way back into this one. They're gonna get the tower as well, and JoJo this time too slow on using the ulti. I, I wonder if he was trying to, you know, be a little bit slow on it, try to bait them out, try to make them fully commit. If he thought they were gonna be able to have the turn and he could get out anyway, but this time the ulti comes out too late. He gets burst down without being able to buy any extra time whatsoever and then that hook was massive the shutdowns really really big you start looking over jensen's doing well moss is doing well and this is what i'm talking about he had he has the ulti he could use it any time but the body slam flash comes in he can't react to it just gets deleted and even though fudge goes in gets that first kill he's put so low that he can't really participate in the fight he for sure was trying to bait because he immediately thumbs up he emoted and he had berserker coming down the river so Vulcan he thought, block that. thought he was going to, uh, you know, bait him into it, but yeah, Vul that, right? an, an Alistar with an ult on. Hold on, guys, we already got another fight. Blabber's trying to get away here. A teleport brings Jensen back to reinforce the rest of FlyQuest. Blabber ain't gonna die, but it cost him his flash. Pretty big tool for Maokai to not have for the next four minutes. That's one of those things where it's just a reaction. You see the hook coming at yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. sidestep, but if he blocks that, maybe it's a different story because Berserker was so rich. Uh, there was an opportunity potentially for them to turn around or at least for it to not be nearly as bad Maybe he dies, but they get out and they defend the tower Also, as a support, you know, if you're auto-filled into support, like, it's fine, you can have those instincts But as a support, you should have the instinct of, I need to block stuff for my AD carry Especially when you're on the cow, man You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta drill that into your support's uh, reactions, so it just becomes natural mm -hmm. Okay, C9's lead has shrunk drastically. They were up 3,000 gold, feeling really good about the state of everything. That fight just kind of suplexed their lead right back down <laughs> into the dirt there in bottom lane. Wow, I, I can see, I can visualize it. I, I know, suplex, it's a, suplex is a great verb. It really does show a visceral idea. <laughs> I've got to say, this has kind of been a throwback to JoJo on EG a couple of years ago, where it felt like teams always just targeted him in the side lanes, and he had this, you know, habit of getting picked off inside lanes. I feel like last year and, and this year, he had really kind of cleaned up on that and had been very difficult to pick off, but FlyQuest are clearly just sending it for him time and time again. Mm. Inspired has just been hunting his ex-teammate across the map. Yeah, Inspired seems to have him pretty well downloaded. He remembers their days as teammates and exactly <laughs> what he needs to do to get the job done here in what is now, once again, a very close game. Inspired, uh, never mind. We got a hook onto Vulcan here. All right, All right fight's away. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, yeah, he deleted Facebook. He went to the gym. He's been working. I was like, I don't care about my ex at all. I, I for sure don't care about him. You know, uh, not going to focus on killing JoJo at all. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Then you run into I'm him doing on a night fine. out, and yeah. it's all out the window. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing just fine. I'm doing just fine. <laughs> the pain, though, honestly. They're going for him again. Oh, boy. This is, uh, this is not where JoJo wants to be. Nice, he gets away using that primed up Q3 to dash away from the Sonic Wave. Inspired had the flash there, so you know if he connects the Sonic Wave, he can easily follow up for the resonating strike in DN sec. And now the pressure definitely really on to uh, Quest here, uh, excuse me, from Flyquest onto C9. 
as they don't have this massive lead to work with anymore. Zeri's still really strong. They obviously can very easily win this game, but Jensen really strong, Masu really strong. They're completing their items. Um, Whippo has been very, very good in the top lane. Hasn't died. He's up in CS. He's been a part of a lot of big plays. Mm. So Fudge hasn't been able to really make much happen in that 1v1. And it's going to be up to him to make it happen in that 5v5 where it can be tough. You know, you try to go in with that Ragnarok and you just get focused down and pushed out very quickly. Speaking of getting focused down when you go in, big purchase here for Whippo has the Seeker's arm guard ready so he can go in for one of those massive engages and then drop the aggro right after so he doesn't get traded. Infinity Edge, third fully completed item for Berserker Zeri. This dude is going to hit like a truck. This is actually really cool. So it's double Anathema's chains from Cloud9. We saw double Vow, now it's double Anathemas, almost for sure going to be on Jensen and Masu. So, you know, both you have that damage reduction on that person, you know, to you, but also the reduced tenacity is really, really big because there's a lot of CC on that Cloud9 side. Another hook comes out. Blabber's going to be the target here at the very start, but Whippo, using the stopwatch, has to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Jojo wants to turn around. Inspire goes for the inset. Oh. Double knockout comes out. Whippo's with a killing spree. Jojo's rooted up. C9's beaten down. FlyQuest is taking him to town. Fly Quest team fighting is insane. It is so much better. That's going to be a Baron for sure. Inspired just takes over, man. Found the kick on a Berserker. Berserker had the summoners, insta dies anyway, tries to get out of there. FlyQuest crushed them. And with that, you have to feel the hopes for Cloud9 in this series are starting to fade away. Get out your brooms. It's looking like a sweep. If bottom lane was the suplex, this was the steel chair. Just watch Inspired Man. He makes all the difference in this fight as Cloud9 are trying to go forward, trying to look for the engage here. Initially onto Whippo, the first hook comes out. Whippo buys time with the Seeker's Arm Guard, then Inspired right here on the side. He's hunting. They try to mark him a little bit, but Berserker is basically being zoned out of the fight just by his implied pressure. Then Warthog, kick, flash, knocks him into the team. He flashes out, but he's already rooted by the auto from Busio, then put it in the bounce house by Whippo, so he can't actually E over the wall. There was no way out for him in that fight. Perfectly executed, great positioning from Inspired, great fight from FlyQuest. Also, if you're looking at the bottom side of the, fi <laughs> the fight from FlyQuest, their two carries were in a really safe position away from the Maokai ult. The Maokai ult went across the screen trying to actually get one of the, the frontline members. Both Jensen and Masu, easy time slipping into the river, avoiding it and just blasting them. Feels like C9 might have made the same mistake I did in that fight where I'm looking at Inspired seeing like, oh yeah, he's gonna go for Jojo. When's he gonna kick Jojo? He wants to try to kick the anime character. Nope, he goes for the Pikachu instead, blowing up the Zeri, guaranteeing the win in the fight. FlyQuest now up 4,000 gold. Blaver forced to take the long way around to group back up with the rest of his team. Whippo is utterly unafraid of these guys. Body slam forward, plus the Q. There's your ulti knocking Blaver back. Jensen throws the ball over the wall. They force the flash back out on a blabber. Jojo wants to go in and find some kind of damage, but honestly, it's not enough to be a real threat. And Jensen, I mean, it seemed kind of crazy at the time to pose the question and be like, oh man, versus Cloud9, is Jensen never going to die the whole series? It's not crazy. That is very close to becoming reality. This man has played so incredibly well for FlyQuest. Their team fighting has been set up so incredibly well by the front line, as we keep on highlighting, that they are now, with Baron buff, have an easy time with this 4-1 split push siege. And it is already starting to close in around Cloud9 from all sides. I mean, life comes at you fast. It was looking like a guaranteed Cloud9 win into, okay, well, now it's a close game into a, now you need heroics to even stand a chance. Vulcan flashes in, JoJo follows up. They need a little bit more burst, but they ain't gonna find it just yet. FlyQuest disengage and kite it out. They'll take out the tier two turret at the same time. Berserker's still trying to find some damage, but FlyQuest is all the way out. Blabber gets jumped on by Inspire, but he ain't too worried about it. Walking around the cask here from the side, nicely steps forward to avoid being knocked back by Whippo. Nobody dies on either side, but critically, that was the flash engage from Vulcan's Alistar that did not get a kill. They cannot hold the tier two turbot in mid lane either. C9 are struggling. The biggest thing I will say for cloud Nine side, for cloud Nine's hope in this series, you did get very, very critical flashes in that attempt in mid. Now, for the next five minutes, Jensen and Masu both do not have flashes. So the small window for Cloud9 has opened up. And look at the timers here for Baron and for Dragon coming up. 
They are not gonna have flashes. So Cloud9, they might have given themselves one baby step of okay. a window to try and get back into it. They have to be able to get back to that back line and kill those carries. We'll see if they can do it though, because Masu on the other side, he's basically dead even in gold now. I don't know how much is in Berserker's pockets, but it's like, this is three items. He is still down the 1K, but that's three items completed. He went for, you know, a very high DPS build. He actually skipped the shiv. So it's Kraken, Navori, and Terminus, which is incredible DPS and three items done for Jensen too. So Berserker is 1100 gold ahead of Masu, but he also has almost exactly 1100 gold more in inventory. Those power spikes are identical between these two carries right now. It's been a pretty incredible comeback from FlyQuest so far here in this third game. Fourth big completed item for Whippo's Gragas. He's got the Morello Namacon now done all the way to continue reducing some of that healing and making it so they can continue finding these bursts. So this is interesting actually here from Berserker. So he went back, he bought a vamp, then decided to sell it and actually changed it to the Hex Drinker. So he's really worried about the 100 zero from Jensen and Whippo in particular. Mm -hmm. Of course, there can be magic damage from other sources as well, but those are the two main contributors. But it does mean he's just going to have lifesteal from runes. Like, he doesn't have any lifesteal actually from his items, so there's yeah. not that ability to just heal easily back up if you do get chunked out. I, I think it's actually a good swap from him because the last two plays where we saw FlyQuest kill him was burst damage, and it was magic damage. FlyQuest, since we mentioned that Berserker has five kills and that he is going to take over this game, FlyQuest had surgically removed the Zeri in back to back plays to, to retake control of this game. They have been so good, uh, both Busio inspi and Inspired, uh, at finding him and kind of handing him to the rest of the team to delete. So very, very worried about a repeat of that play. FlyQuest are really showing up in this series, man. We said it at the top of the day when we were watching the teams arrive. Hold on, never mind. We don't even have time for that. Ragnarok forced out as Busio again lands a dredge line. Inspire looking for the angle here. The death charge is dropped. Jojo into the back, trying to find the entryway with a bait seal, but he's almost killed immediately. He has to fully retreat. Busio looks for another hook, but he won't find this one. Vulcan's trying to get away, but with everybody else in C9 already in full retreat, I don't think it's happening. Matsu goes on a rampage, and Jojo tries to Q3 out. The Mortal Steel keeps him alive for now and berserker is ghosted all the way back into his own base blabber might just be able to escape here but it's another fight going for fly tank, quest tank, tank. it's another team fight these guys are winning they will tank up for the cannon minion in mid yes it gets eliminated by the zap but not in time to save the turret and even without the fight going perfectly them for them right they actually stopped with both throughout the ulti to try to knock back fudge but he had ragnarok already up there was a misclick from busio they actually had both blabber and berserker standing on each other and he ulted onto Blabber anyway, you know, so it's that tough situation where they both overlap, but they're onto the Baron. They win the fight anyway. FlyQuest is looking more and more and more dominant. Uncontested Baron here. Cloud9 gonna try to run to this dragon, put themselves the soul point, get a bounty, but they are down 7k with an open inhibitor and a Baron buff on FlyQuest, who are potentially one fight away from sweeping this series. And they don't waste any time. They immediately send Jensen topside to push out top wave while everybody else goes for their reset first. So everybody else getting their, their money spent. Jensen gets one wave push on topside. I wonder what his, uh, his cash is looking like. Well, it looks like about 12,500 total with 2K sitting in his pocket, just waiting to be spent. The Oriana 3-0 and 8, feeling great in this game. Honestly, got to give props to Busio too, who's just been hitting so many hooks to start off so many of these fights in the favor of FlyQuest. Now Inspired and the rest of Fly pushing down the top side. Jojo immediately has to snap back from his soul unbound. And it looks like this minion wave will be ready to crash into the turret. I mean, it is crazy that Jensen still has not yet died, but it's almost crazier. Jojo still hasn't gotten a kill in the entire series. You know, he's not been able to get on the board. Jensen has just been playing flawless. Fly quest. They're just gonna muscle their way into the base, take down the tier three turret in top. That's now two open inhibitors. Top lane and mid lane, both vulnerable. Blabber jumping in, looking for Inspired, but there's just not an angle here. Blabber now having to deal with Whippo. He'll be the focus. C9 dog piles in. It's a five man play, looking for Whippo, but he just flashes back over the wall, follows with body slam. He's safe. Jensen keeping the Baron buff on these cannons while threatening a flank from the side too means that they for sure will get this inhibitor. Mid lane inhibitor is also still exposed, so they could rotate over mid wave not too far out. They've still got this Baron for another 75 seconds. FlyQuest have plenty of time to work with. They'll use the teleport mid lane. Whippo is going to heal back up. He'll be ready to go. 
Oh, no, not no. gonna find an angle here just yet. C9 again, trying to focus on Whipple. They know he doesn't have an hourglass this time. Inspire goes over the wall. He needs to find one of the carries, but he ain't gonna do it. Berserker gets a shutdown and Whipple drops. But now, what about the rest of the fight? Monsters already kill off Berserker. C9's on the run again. Vulcan gets turned to ground. Beef is a double kill for Masu. A two for one trade, favoring FlyQuest. It's about to be three for one. It's about to be a clean sweep for FlyQuest. They march on to the Nexus now. Four versus is two. FlyQuest are looking to earn their spot in the finals, are looking to challenge for their first ever LCS title as an organization, and they're going to do it by clean sweeping Cloud9. Dude, inspired in that last one, over the wall twice to get the perfect angle to kick Berserker in again. That was insane. That was actually insane. Another surgical removal of the enemy AD carry. This FlyQuest squad, I mean, you got to echo Nuke Duck's interview. He was like, whoa, we are playing surprisingly well. And that was our own coach that said that. This, this team absolutely came out and completely blasted. Jensen, in fact, did not die the entire series. Jensen, no deaths. JoJo, no kills in the entire series. Very, very surprising results. You know, FlyQuest, people were thinking they were coming. This was going to be a really tight series. Even with the monster leads in games one and three in the early game, Cloud9 could not get it done. FlyQuest out-positioned them in the team fights, out-executed them in the team fights. This was all about really out-thinking your opponents and out-executing them in those critical moments because Inspire, to me, was so massive in these pivotal moments. Being the person to find those picks time and time again, hunting JoJo across the map in multiple games, and finding Berserker in back-to-back -back fights with the kick flash, the one member on Cloud9 who maybe could have got it done. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the team fighting that we saw from FlyQuest in this series has been the best we've seen from any team in the LCS all split, and it's not close. Not even a little bit. That was scary. And I think Cloud9 are a little bit shell-shocked from just how one-sided that series was. Even in the game where they were ahead here in game number three, FlyQuest just turned it around beautifully. And now with their 3-0 win complete, we're joining Italy and Chen and on stage for an interview. Hello, I am here with the deathless and victorious Jensen. First of all, congratulations. You've now qualified for the mid-season invitational. Um, thank you, thank you. Was that on your mind at all in the series or just laser focused on what was going on? Yeah, I mean, I was definitely thinking about, you know, the winner goes to Chengdu, which will be an exciting event to go to because I missed out on the last international tournament. So I'm really looking forward to it and I'm happy we made it. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Um, in terms of going through this series completely deathless, were you also aware of that or was that something that the team was kind of cheering you on for? Uh, I don't think we talked about it, but I mean, in the back of my mind, I definitely like remembered it. I also remembered that enemy mid lane, I'm pretty sure he didn't get a single kill. So that was like also a fun fact that happened. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, going into this matchup, I think a lot of eyes were on mid because of how much pressure JoJo is able to exert in a lot of C9's games. You absorbed that really well. So what was your kind of individual and team game plan going up against C9 today? Um, I mean, I know how good of a player JoJo is. And usually, like, when C9 wins, it's through JoJo pressuring the map and stuff. And I also know, like, I'm really good at neutralizing players who play really aggressive and tries to snowball. So I thought as long as I played a good game, like, we should win C9 pretty easily. And then one thing I really appreciated today was just generally your draft strategy going up against C9. So talk to me a little bit about that, because I know it previously, and you've even joked about it yourself, I think a lot of people have criticized your champ pool, Azir being removed. I think you've had an excellent playoffs thus far. Um, so talk to me about your draft strategy going into C9. Um, I mean, we kind of just draft whatever is like comfort for us and it works best for us. And we've had good results with in practice, but we also knew that C9, they snowball through mid a lot. So we just banned Ari and Nico. And after that, it was like just pretty straightforward game. And I mean, it was pretty easy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you guys seem to have a little bit of a tougher time against Team Liquid last week. In terms of coming out of that series, what do you think your biggest takeaway was going into this week to qualify for finals in MSI? 
Uh, I mean, the games against TL, I don't know if there's like a specific takeaway. It was complete <laughs> banger games back and forth. So I think, you know, I don't know what the takeaways were actually, you know, I think we just we just played bad some games and had some bad individual performances and we just cleaned it up a bit today. But I also think TL was a much tougher opponent. They play a lot better than C9. So I think it was just harder against TL. That's the perfect segue into my question next, which is going to be who do you think is going to be facing you in the grand finals? Uh, I mean, uh, I thought for sure before the series it was going to be us against C9 again. But after today, like, I don't know, man. I, I can't, I can't say C9 after today. I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. So probably TL. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. It's going to be TL. Thank you so much for taking the time, Jensen. Once again, congratulations. And Thank we you. will throw it to the analyst lounge to close out the day. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it in the back, the lounge. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, back Emily. To the lounge, Emily and Jensen. Crazy stat Jensen had there. Uh, no deaths for Jensen, no kills for JoJo. Yeah, I don't think that happens, especially for mid lane, like top lane. Sure, that could happen, but mid lane not getting a single kill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we break more down, uh, reminder, LCS Finals weekend, it kicks off next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific for the lower bracket finals, which is now Team Liquid versus Cloud9, and then... The winner of that will play FlyQuest in the finals. That's Sunday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. So coverage starts very early for the pre-show there. And speaking of which, even though Jensen didn't flip, even though Raz, you didn't flip your vote, Jensen's won player of the series. Boom! Yeah. That's a big one. I do have to ask you, uh, Dokla, as someone who lost the upper bracket final and then won the oh, finals yeah. finals, what yeah. mindset are you in as, as Honestly, I, just going to I think it's more of a game. buff playing it through the lower bracket because you have more stage experience. Well, back when it was like on a stage, like you can get, just have more stage experience. Um, and you just have more practice and more momentum. Like whoever wins, I think, just feels good. Mm -hmm. And um, even though you're like, you're showing what you're going to play, I think it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, so honestly, it's going to be a blessing in disguise for C9, losing in a, such a quick fashion to go through lower bracket. And it, reps. it was quick, Raz. <laughs> it was quick. It was insane. Uh, so, well, you guys have predicted a five-game series, but you both predicted flag questions. Yes. Yeah. Doka and I both had the correct-ish prediction. Yeah. And I had the least correct prediction of all time with a 3-1 Cloud9. Because I came in with the expectation of, oh, you know, they slammed 100 Thieves. They came into the series uh, looking really much on page. I think my biggest takeaway was just, A, FlyQuest definitely outdrafted throughout the series. Mm -hmm. um, B, overall, team fighting from FlyQuest was crazy good. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. in the last game when they were behind and there was that one team fight around mid lane uh, next to River, uh, Botside River, where Inspired gets that kick onto Zeri and, like, they just... Throw in resources, Gragas on top, Gragas barrel on top that kills them. So I think their team fighting was great, their drafting was great. There was a lot to be positive about them. Yeah, and I don't, I need to see the ballots on this one. Jensen won Player of the Series, but yeah. our Player of the Week, Master Player of the Week, is Whippo. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's just the way That's everybody crazy. votes. Because I, I know I voted for Yawn. There was some crazy stuff. There was apparently like a tied ballot and tiebreakers. Anyway, Player of the Week to Whippo. Congratulations, Dokla. I want you to talk about this one because I think you pointed out how impressive what Whippo did this series actually was, sometimes based on the fact that he blind picked three times. Yeah, so he blind picked three games in a row and he had more impact in pretty much every single game, um, you know, setting up plays. I think the TP game, uh, the TP play in game three was the biggest play of the series, at least when the when they were behind and he just found a really good angle to get back into the game. So, um, and I think he just buying a lot of time in uh, front lining for a team to play well like he's stuck in the middle of like five people here but just presses on his here by his time flashes out and you know inspire hits a great kick into the Nautilus into the Ori shockwave but you know it's all set up by um, just making space for the carries yeah I definitely think that blip and team fighting was like a big one that's why my player of the series vote went towards him um, but it's crazy to think that <laughs> So your player of this, you're not yes. player of the series, but your player of the week. Listen, I, we don't need to. We know who to direct any vitriol to. If okay. We have it. So I heard there was a three-way tie in voting. Yeah. Between the lounge uh -huh. and the casters 
for a player of the week yeah. and a two-way tie for player of the series. In the event of a tie, our stats guy, who goes by at MZLeoTheChosen <laughs> on Twitter, broke both ties. So if you have any issues, you know who we go to. Leave Leo alone. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did great. I think he did great. That's all I'm saying. I think there were great choices. Yeah, you guys look at the stats. I look at the game impact. <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's pull the up the bracket for the here. final week of the playoffs. And and to see what happened so far. <laughs> FlyQuest with a three over Cloud9 today. C9 and TL going to be playing in that lower bracket final. And that's suddenly a much more interesting game, looking at how close Team Liquid was to taking down FlyQuest in the first round and how solidly FlyQuest took down C9 today. It's going to be, I, I, re, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen next week. Hearing from Jensen at the end of that interview and being like, I can't pick C9. Yeah. Basically, just based off of that day's game. I mean, I would also agree with Jensen here. I think Team Liquid look a lot stronger. Um, I think MT is playing really well, and uh, I, 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 I just don't see how TL could lose. I, I'd be surprised mm. if they lose. MT also said he doesn't think Blab was very good yesterday. Oh my goodness! And then yawn facepalm because he didn't want to piss <laughs> enough. Anyway, that's, true. that's it for us. We'll be back next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Thank you, Doka, for joining us. That's going to be TL versus C9 is the first matchup. So for now, we're sending it over to the NACL. See you over there. See you guys. Thank you. On me? This, this, this guy is hitting, bro. Hold on. I don't die here, okay? I don't die. Okay. I don't die, I don't die, I don't die. Can we look at this at all? Yeah, yeah. Free man kick, free man kick. No flash on the Vi. Play slow, guys. So this, I want to flash on the Vi, okay? Kill them all, 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 kill them all. Wow. I'll speed us, I'll speed us. I have flash. I can't reach. That's Whoa. all you. Whoa. Get the Elder, I mean, get, get the Drake and Nash or can, can we look here? The Rumble has no flash as well. Me, 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 me. They're looking on uh, Zen. Look, 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 Yon, 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 Yon. Ulting backline. It's big. Yon, 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 so down. Can we hit the next one? They're one HP. 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 They're Oh, fuck you, I did not hit Olaf, 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 before Zeri joins. Kite, 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 we can kill Zeri. No, 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 no. Zeri missiles, Keep fighting, keep fighting. I'm holding Zeri, maybe? Zeri, 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 What a hook. No flash, no flash. Well played, well played, dude. Fire goes over the wall. He needs to find one of the carries, but he ain't gonna do it. Berserker gets a shutdown and Whippo drops. But now, what about the rest of the fight? Monsters already kill off Berserker. C9 to the run again. Vulcan gets turned to ground. Beef is a double kill for Masu. A two for one trade, favoring FlyQuest. It's about to be three for one. It spread out, spread out. We have flashes. We're okay. We don't need to spread out. Flash, flash up. Two. GG Bang! Guys, guys we completed the challenge. Uh, we completed the challenge. No play, guys. It was actually oh, the challenge. <laughs> Wait, remember the tic tac? Nice, nice. I also remember that enemy mid lane, I'm pretty sure he didn't get a single kill. So that was like also a fun fact that happened. Um, but yeah, after today, like. I don't know, man. I, I, can't, I can't say C9 after today. I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry.